What I find interesting about a lot of these comments, because there are quite a few, is that quite a few of them are making a reference to this idea of people wanting to be marginalized. And the tangible reality here is that you're the ones doing the marginalizing. You're the ones doing the discrimination. If you stopped and stopped trying to argue that my existence in public is grooming children, that her saying that she doesn't experience sexual attraction is forcing it down your throat, we would literally not be having this conversation. Are you tired of seeing the alphabet mafia argue that they are oppressed? Stop oppressing them. It truly is that simple. It's not that complicado, but it is complicado to these pen This video is not the original video that I intended on uploading today. So I did a commentary on a conservative news outlet called Newsmax and I used a bit of their footage. And unfortunately before the video went live, it did indeed get copyright claimed by Newsmax. So I had to go and rework this video, but this video in its original form exists exclusively on Nebula. Nebula is a creator owned streaming service that allows independent creators such as myself create some of the content that we can't exactly create on YouTube. In the future, if I run into an issue like this again, the original version of the video will be uploaded exclusively to Nebula. And right now there are a couple of videos of mine that are indeed exclusively on Nebula, but nowhere else. And I'm just one of many other creators doing the same and so much more. Foreign Man in a Foreign Land, FD Signifier, Philosophy Tube, and Lindsay Ellis are all part of Nebula. Lindsay Ellis is actually exclusively uploading to Nebula. And right now, if you go to the description box below and click on the link down there, you will get a link to a 40% off of an annual membership of Nebula. And it also comes bundled with Nebula classes where Nebula creators give insight into their creative process. So if any of that interests you, click on the link in my description box below. I think the first time I heard about asexuality, it was in biology when we were talking about the way that certain animals are able to reproduce without having sex. And I guess for me, it's always been confusing what it actually means for humans. And I've done a lot of work in trying to understand. And I think because of that work, a certain clip that I saw on TikTok really left me feeling some type of way. And I feel like we don't talk enough about asexuality and I felt the need to use whatever little platform I have to talk more about it. So let's watch this video. It's an interview with Yasmin Benoit, who is a asexual activist and it is... Interessante, okay? Let's just say it's muy interesante. I only took three years of Spanish and I failed pretty much every year. But anyway, let's watch this and I'm gonna give you my thoughts as we go because girl, it is such a doozy. And also watching this video gave me so many thoughts about why I personally tend to say no to interviews like this. Okay, so the video is titled Yasmin Benoit, Asexuals Aren't Recognized Under the Equality Act. Okay, so like I said, the original version of this video was claimed by Newsmax. You can see the original version on Nebula. But for this video, I'm going to just narrate all of the various happenings within the interview. So this guy's name is Charles Higby. He is a former Navy SEAL and conservative news anchor on Newsmax. And this woman's name is Yasmin Benoit. She is an asexual activist who recently got into a bunch of scuffles on Twitter for openly advocating for the asexual community and their rights. It's pretty clear when you start this interview that Charles Higby is not a fan of the ever increasing LGBT acronym. He says, well, among the new term LGBTQIA2S plus exists asexual people. Of course, suggesting that there really is no need for an A in LGBTQIA+, which in fact is, in his view, a way too long of an acronym. Okay, so let's just start out right away. I understand why some people struggle to say LGBTQIA+. For me, I've been saying it so often that for me, it's just like a thing that I say, right? LGBTQIA+, right? And the thing that annoys me about this is if you're not part of the LGBTQIA+, I don't really know why you care, right? I understand that it's frustrating for people to be in such an expansive acronym, especially when there are some issues that really don't belong together. But in all reality, things like the Equality Act 
are a great example of why politically people do that, right? Over the years, as we understand more about human sexuality, there are new terms that come out. And I understand that can be confusing to people, right? It's so hard for a lot of people to undo what they learned when they were coming up, right? A lot of people learn you're either gay or you're straight. There's a whole group of people who are still struggling with the idea that you can be bisexual. And there are people in this world who do not experience sexual attraction, who, especially in this hypersexual world, don't understand that them not experiencing sexual attraction is not only just okay, but there's a whole group of people out there who also feel the same thing. And to my understanding, asexuality can be a spectrum. And for a lot of people, it just means that they don't experience sexual attraction, especially in the way that most people do. And that can range from not experiencing it at all to experiencing it sometimes with various particular people in a very particular context and setting. Now, if you follow my podcast, you know that I did an episode about demisexuality where I ask, am I demisexual or am I just a person with standards? That was a, a pressing question for me in my own understanding of asexuality. And what I ultimately came back with is that no, I personally do experience sexual attraction, but that's different than me not wanting to immediately jump in bed with someone that I don't know. And so I think asexuality is one of those things that like a lot of topics like this, you really benefit from having conversations with people who actually identify that way. And Yasmin Benoit does a lot of work advocating for asexuality. And what I got across in this interview, as you will see, is that the person who's interviewing her just really doesn't have an interest in getting it, right? And for me, this is always frustrating because you don't have to understand somebody's sexuality. You don't have to understand somebody's gender identity. In the context that we're talking about here, we're talking about not discriminating against them. And obviously I understand how people can be confused by why would somebody identify with something they don't do? Why would they need protections for that? But the thing is, when you listen to the way that he talks to her about asexuality, you kind of understand why there are so many people who identify as asexual who very much feel the need to have protections. He asks for Yasmin to define what asexuality is, and she says, Being asexual means experiencing little to no sexual attraction towards anyone, regardless of their gender. Which, of course, prompts him to asking, how exactly are asexuals discriminated against? Well, Yasmin Benoit brings up the UK Equality Act of 2010, which, like the Equality Act in the United States, explicitly makes it clear that it's illegal to discriminate against certain groups of people. Yasmin Benoit gives two examples of asexual discrimination in cases where asexuals are on the receiving end of hate crime violence or in protection against conversion therapy. Therapy. While she's giving all of these very clear examples of discrimination, it's really clear that Charles Bigby is just kind of listening to respond because he says, you know, if you're if, if let's say me, I'm having a conversation with you, I convince you that, hey, I, you know, I think you should try, you know, having a companion or being romantic or, or spending time with someone. It, it would that was that just that's my opinion saying, hey, look, I'm married. Why? Why don't you try it? Would that be considered hate? It's so funny listening to people talk about this. There's another conversation happening here where I think Yasmin Benoit, being a woman, especially a beautiful woman, saying, I'm not going to have sex. I'm not going to do those things because they don't interest me. There are especially men who just struggle to understand why that would be, right? They struggle to understand like how you could not want, especially a man in your life who would do things for you in that way. I find it so funny when, and, and this is something that's beyond this particular context, but when women withdraw from relationships and say, I have no interest in this, I find it so funny how people are so convinced that saying that and standing firmly in that is somehow not something that was very heavily and deeply considered, <laughs> right? Or that it's inherently a loss or something that they're missing out on. Yasmin Benoit is 
absolutely gorgeous. She is not somebody who's struggling to find people who are interested in her. That's not what it's about. It's just that the interest is not mutual. Here's the thing that's really funny about what he just said. Not having a partner doesn't mean that you're asexual. Not having sex with people doesn't mean that you're asexual. Asexuality is about your experience of sexual attraction, right? So an asexual is quite literally just saying, I don't experience that, right? And in the context of this, she's also arguing, and there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm content. Don't try to medicalize me. Don't try to fix me. Don't put me in conversion therapy. All things that are pretty normal, rational, reasonable things to say in this context. But he just struggles to wrap his mind around it, which I get, right? There's part of me watching this interview that thinks maybe he's just acting like he doesn't get it, right? There's something to be said about people who have that type of interviewing. You ask the ignorant questions and you get the answers and they fall where they fall. And there is something to be said about that, but I don't know. And it's pretty clear by his language that he views asexuality in the same realm of somebody who is just abstinent or somebody who's just not currently having sex now. He very clearly sees it as a flaw to be corrected or something that is just temporary and doesn't understand that asexuality is a spectrum about somebody's experience with sexual attraction. Even though Yasmin Benoit came with several examples of asexual discrimination, by the end of the interview it's clear that Charles Higby does not care, was not listening, and learned absolutely nothing. And the interview ends fairly fairly unceremoniously. The reason why I don't personally do interviews like this is because it's about you come on this show, justify yourself, try to get me to understand why I should care. And it can be really unproductive. I'm sure we're gonna read the comments, but I'm sure the comments are going to feel a certain type of way about this. Now, mind you, Newsmax has 2.5 or 2.15 million subscribers, but the video that I'm looking at only has 1.8k views. I know that the video I saw of Yasmin on TikTok has far more. But here's something I want to point out that I learned from my conversations with asexual folk. Asexuality doesn't mean you don't have orientation towards certain genders, right? It's a spectrum. And some people do indeed identify as asexual lesbians, asexual gay men, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because they are ultimately if they do experience sexual attraction, attracted to certain people, but it's not in the way that I guess we're all imagining most people are, right? Like I said, I did a whole podcast about that. If you guys want to hear from actual asexual folk, I will link that podcast in the cards and also below in the comment box. But anyway, I wanted to look at some comments because I'm sure they're interesting. Okay. This is the top comment on this video. Trixie did it 58 says, don't care what you do in your bedroom or don't do. People are people. My feelings get hurt having it shoved down my throat. Quit sexualizing everything and leave the kids alone. Now, I always find this concept of shoving it down someone's throat to be really interesting. I recently got together with my family because we had a funeral, that's what these flowers are from. My mom passed away and so I had to meet up with my family and it brought back a lot of feelings from when I was younger and when I was starting to transition. And I was often told in my youth that me being myself was shoving it in people's faces. Now, what did that actually look like? It looked like me just existing in their vicinity. It looked like me referencing my partner. It it looked like me being myself just in my most rawest of forms. So it's annoying to me for people to act like you just being yourself, you just hanging out is shoving it down people's throats. Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all experiencing from cis hetero folk, right? Cis hetero folk are constantly shoving it down our throats. This dude, while she was discussing her own sexuality, mentioned that he was a normal guy with a wife, right? Because heterosexuality is seen as normative and healthy sexuality, right? That's not shoving it down the throats, right? But if I were attracted to women and spoke about my relationships with women, that would be me shoving it down someone's throat, right? It is just homophobia. It is just transphobia. It is just acephobia, right? For you to consider somebody just describing themselves as shoving it down someone's throat and especially 
describing it as trying to get a hold of kids, right? What is Yasmin Benoit doing to try to get a hold of kids by advocating for asexual people and especially advocating against conversion therapy for asexual people, right? If someone's just saying, I'm not a person interested in sex, that's not even like an intrusive thing, right? That's just somebody saying they don't experience something, right? Do you know what I mean? What's the reason, what's the real reason, not that there ever is a good one, to advocate against that, right? What's the real reason, right? Second comment, why would anyone know or even care, let alone try to change an asexual person? Why are so many people rushing to be a victim? For the love of God, this is insane. Normal people do everything not to be a victim. Make this insanity stop. Now, I'm gonna follow up this one with another comment, right? This comment references something that I've literally talked about in this video already. I'm beginning to understand how we too, as heterosexuals are discriminated against because we have no hate crime designation. The unfortunate reality is that hate crimes are a reflection of the system we live in having biases, right? Biases that are often in place because of history, right? Historically, most of our society is straight. So here's another top comment. No more coddling the manipulators who feel marginalized. They need to understand feelings, words, and behavior cannot be mandated or legislated, nor can they assume it's hateful or phobic if an individual is not in agreement with their point of view. So this woman talked about conversion therapy, right? Which is quite literally somebody taking usually a minor and forcing them to change who they are frankly, to humor and satisfy their parents, right? That's usually what it's about, right? Here you are, a person whose life I don't agree with, who has a sexuality or gender identity or whatever that is something that I don't agree with, and I'm going to forcibly try to make you not that. That's what conversion therapy is, right? These people heard that and said, no more coddling the manipulators who feel marginalized, right? We would not be having this conversation if people like you didn't advocate for and fight to protect conversion therapy. And that's the fucked up thing. People see conversion therapy as like the normal thing, right? Like it's the normal thing to try to force a lesbian to have sex with men. It's the normal thing to try to force a gay man to have sex with women. That's the normal, well-adjusted, rational, reasonable thing. It's not normal or well-adjusted for somebody to just exist the way they are and be attracted to or not attracted to who they are. That's not normal. Forcing somebody into living in a way that flatters you, that doesn't challenge you, that doesn't make you uncomfortable is normal. And it's a funny sort of like way of speaking out of both sides of your mouth, right? Normal and natural is this guy being heterosexual and married to a woman. So any sort of conversion therapy, any sort of abuse that goes in the name of that is natural and normal. When ironically, it would be natural and normal for somebody to just be themselves or not like who they like or don't like, right? That would be the normal, natural thing to do. But because heterosexuality is presented as not only just the norm, but the healthy norm, there are people like Yasmin Benoit who have been told that they need to change themselves, sometimes by force. What I find interesting about a lot of these comments, because there are quite a few, is that quite a few of them are making a reference to this idea of people wanting to be discriminated against, this idea of people wanting to be marginalized. And the tangible reality here is that you're the ones doing the marginalizing. You're the ones doing the discrimination. If you stopped, and stop trying to argue that my existence in public is grooming children, that her saying that she doesn't experience sexual attraction is forcing it down your throats. We would literally not be having this conversation. Are you tired of seeing the alphabet mafia argue that they are oppressed? Stop fucking oppressing them. It truly is that simple, ABC, one, two, three follow the leader, do re me, okay? It's not that complicado, but it is complicado to these pendejos. Sorry, I'm trying to use all of my like, (laughs) trying to use all of my Spanish vernacular. It is complicated to these people who are honestly just arguing that they want to continue having the power to oppress and marginalize folk, right? 
I can say this about so many of the conversations we're having right now, but this is not about protecting children. It's never been about protecting women. It's never been about grooming or whatever. It's about power. These people want the ability to limit the options of everyone who is not white, cis, and heterosexual. That's just what it is. And I think we spend a lot of time arguing, girl, I'm going on a rant. I think we spend a lot of time trying to argue with these people and trying to justify ourselves with these people, clarify, educate, whatever. But in my opinion, it's all so much more simple stick than that, right? These people just want power. It's all about power. It's not about logic or reason or trying to understand it in a rational way. They just want power, right? Okay, so I went to Newsmax's page and they are, from what I can piece together, a right-leaning news organization. And I don't know why Yasmin would agree to this interview, right? Obviously, we have this conversation all the time about, oh my gosh, you guys don't want to live in a bubble and you should talk to people who disagree with you or whatever. This was never about understanding asexuality. It was only about arguing that the LGBT just has too many letters in it and people need to just stop adding letters to it because it's annoying to me and I don't like it. That's quite literally all it is, right? Like it's really not more than that. I really don't understand why she would want to go on this and talk about this, but I know that she does a lot of great work. Everyone should go check her out. Yasmin Benoit, asexual advocate. Yeah, that's all I had to say about this. I would love to hear from the asexual folk in my audience. How did you feel about this interview? What are your thoughts? Should she have done this interview at all? I say no, what say you? Anyway, on that note, I will talk to you guys later and I want you to always remember and to never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Bye.